Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about unit testing. I've talked about this in the past a couple times, and in general, when people ask me about unit testing with Unity, I just let them know that it's rare. It doesn't happen a lot. You don't usually see projects that have unit test coverage or integration tests or even any automated testing. Of course, there are some some places that do it, but again, it's still relatively rare if you just go from place to place and look around. And the reason for that is usually just that, um, well, first, it wasn't really supported until relatively recently. It's only been a couple years that the test tools have been available and that unit testing was kind of viable and semi-integrated into the editor. And um, even then, it was not easy. So testing a mono behavior was still kind of a big task and it's still not the easiest thing to set up. You really have to make sure that you're architected for it and that you're keeping your code set up so that the tests can all work and nothing is going to break. And of course, it can be a good idea to do, but it's not always uh, the best way to go and it's not always the easiest way to go. And it's definitely not something that I see much of. And now, uh, when you're looking at regular development on web apps or Windows apps, anything like that, you see, you know, unit testing is a first class thing. It's something that happens in almost all of those projects. And a lot of the time, even if I'm starting one off, I'll start with tests first. Just kind of get the testing framework set up and start writing tests and then write the code to make those tests pass. Um, again, in Unity, a lot harder with the mono behaviors. But in my recent experience, uh, just revisiting some mob programming, and I've got a video I did about that a couple days ago you can check out. Um, while I was doing that, I was just kind of watching the value that they were getting from unit testing. And since I don't do a whole lot of non-Unity stuff recently, I'd kind of lost a sense of that, that extra benefit that they're getting. And it's not just the stability, but it's that speed of iteration. If you want to change your code and run it against a unit test, it's a whole lot faster than changing it, getting your game back to the state that it needs to be in, and then checking the thing out, and then going through and checking everything else again to make sure that you haven't broken stuff. So one case I came across, that, that like while this was kind of in the front of my mind, was with uh, one of the projects that I've been working on where we have an ability system, and it's just you know a standard game where you have a player that can do things to other entities or other NPCs or players, and then there's some chat messaging going on like, hey, Jason cast a fireball on that orc for 10 points of damage or something like that. And the message, of course, needs to change based on who's seeing the message, right? Like, if I'm casting it, I'd see you cast a fireball on that orc for 10 damage. And if the orc sees it, it'd say, hey, Jason cast a fireball on you for 10 damage. Right? There's um, a big variety of how the message could be sent out and then it also varies uh, based on the targets so the ability could have multiple different targets it could be something that does damage to one player and heals another player and it's got different messaging and I need to make sure that the messaging is all correct that the right player is getting the right message based off of the um, the correct scenario and that all of the variables are getting replaced with context correct variables like you or they or the name or whatever it is and um i'd been struggling with this a little bit just because the iteration time on fixing these things is relatively large if you got to stand up a server stand up a couple clients go through the whole setup and then try it out see what the message looks like okay that worked now i got to go back and check every other single message that could be related and make sure that i didn't break those and then you know eventually something does break and I got to go back through and redo this whole test again. So I decided, hey, that's a perfect setup for unit testing. It makes sense. It gives me a good separation of generating the text versus uh, sending out the text. It makes make sure that I have to separate those out so that I can test those generation methods. And, uh, you know, it gives me really quick iteration time. So what I've got up here is just a really simple, small subset of tests. And if you've never created some before, um, this is what the window looks like. So if you go window and then go to test runner, remember this is all built in as of uh, some version of 2017. You don't actually need to get an asset. You just open up the test runner window. And if you haven't created any, you can just hit create edit mode test for your first one. It'll actually auto generate the file and set it all up for you so that you can run tests. And then that's exactly what I've done in this other project here. Now, when you create a test, 
let's let's just go into the code. You'll see that we have a test attribute on the actual individual methods for the test. And then the class is just a regular old class. It is in the editor folder though. And I believe it needs to be in an editor folder to work. Now, if I wanna run the tests, I can just hit run all and you'll see it just kicks off. It does compile, make sure that it's up to date and then runs all the tests. And here I've actually got the results from running it before. And here, if I click on them, you can see the, um, the tests tell me if they failed, like these ones. They tell me why they failed and what they were expecting. What I'm gonna do now is just go into one of those tests, fix it up, and then um, talk about it a little bit more. And if you're interested in unit testing, uh, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do a couple more videos on how to kind of get going with this stuff, how to separate out your code so that it all works with unit tests. But for now, I'm just gonna open up the source code. So just right click, hit open source code, and it goes right into the method. And let's take a look at what this one's doing. So this is cast, complete a cast on self, lands on self uh, with a defensive target type. So I have uh, multiple target types. Let's look at this one too. So I'm um, actually, I think I'll do this one. Lands on self, and this is using a self target type. So the first thing I do is set up a, essentially a mock ability owner. So this is the caster for the thing. And it's defined up above. It could probably just be defined in the method to be a little bit cleaner. And then the same for an ability definition. So this has like, what is the thing targeting? What are the effects on it? What is the text? What are the icons? All that kind of data on there. And I only set a couple things because I really only care about the text that's seen by the thing that's buffed and the primary target type, which in this case is self. And really, you'll see in a minute that primary target type doesn't even matter in this test. Um, and I don't actually need this line of code either. So there we go, simplifying and cleaning things up. But you see here in the ability definition, I've got the buff lands text seen by the buffed person or player, um, should say your mind clears. And then we figure out the resulting text and assert that it's equal, that it says your mind clears. Now I'm gonna go into here and see why it's failing. Well, kind of hard to tell if you don't know what the code is already. So now what I'm gonna do is add a breakpoint. I'll just put a breakpoint right here and attach to Unity. So just hit the attach button or F5. And then I'm gonna run the unit test and step through so we can see what's going on and how I would fix something like this. So remember that was the is it the lands on self one? Yeah, lands on self. Let's do the lands on self. Oh. There it is. Just double click it, and you see that I hit the breakpoint now. So I'm going to step in with F11 and take a look. And you can see right here, I've got a little notification there that uh, this text is null. So this is the buff lands text seen by others and here i'm setting the one seen by buffed so i think this already kind of tells you that hey this is the wrong object i got the wrong data in there or the wrong text field and i just need to change that to self now of course i broke that one intentionally right before doing this but there were very similar ones that were broken that um i fixed beforehand so seen by, oh, so it's not seen by self, it's seen by buffed. There we go. And I, I probably wanna rename these methods going forward too to make them match up. But now that I fixed that, if I wanna check to make sure that I actually fixed the issue, just hit run all. And any second now, it'll kick off. It, you can't see it, it's on the other screen, but the little compile spinny circle is going while it gets ready. There we go, let's try it again, there we go. And now my tests are green, it is passed. So this may seem like a relatively simple one, but we're not just getting that text, we're also doing some string replacement based on uh, variables that can be in there, like the target name or the ability name or the amount of damage done, any of those things. And if we look at another one of these tests, like um, let's say we wanted to look at this one right here, let's open up that one. Just show you a little bit more complicated test. Again, they're not that complicated. So this one says um, we've got a target and that's another, this is essentially a mock owner. And it, um, and here, let me go to it. You see, it actually just implements this I entity interface. So as long as we're implementing that, we're good in our mock. Now we set a display name to bad guy. We set ourself or the owner of this ability to Dan. 
And then uh, set up an ability definition with a name for the ability, and then a percent owner begins to cast targeting target. And here what I'm doing is checking to make sure that the offensive target message is actually getting replaced. And technically I'm also looking at the, um, the owner target name, or the owner name, so that should be pulled into a separate test. But I've got them both kind of crammed into this one test right now. And you'll see that it goes through and it calls this get begin cast others, which if I look at it, you see it's relatively simple. It has to figure out the correct message to use and then it has to uh, replace the strings, that's it. But we want to make sure that it's doing the right thing and here it's checked to see that it says Dan begins to cast targeting bad guy. And that's it. And now I know that, hey, this case is good. It's always good as long as the test pass. I can integrate this into the build process so that we know, hey, fail a build if, if something goes wrong. And I think I'm gonna start pulling this in more and more to some of the bigger, more complicated projects where we don't have just a bunch of mono behaviors moving around. Um, and we have things where there's a decent amount of complicated logic that's not really super gameplay heavy. Again, testing on the mono behaviors, quite a bit more difficult. This is relatively simple. This is extremely simple to get started, extremely simple to run. You don't have to do any extra setup and it, it just works. So I highly recommend you check it out and just think of you know any little thing that's broken a couple times in the past and see if, hey, maybe you can get that under a unit test and maybe start abstracting out your code. Again, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit here, but when I did this the first time, this class didn't exist. A lot of this code, this messaging was like the uh, the parsing was tightly coupled in with the sending of the message. So there's a mess. There's a essentially a method call that would parse it and send it all at once. And now I've been to get it under unit test, forced to split this out and the code looks better, it's cleaner, it's easier to understand, it's easier to follow, and I know if something goes wrong. So again, highly recommend it, try it out. If you have experience with unit testing though, and have some suggestions, or if you have questions about it, please drop them in the comments. I'd be interested to see what others think and what kind of um, testing you're doing, or what recommendations you might have for ways that I can do my testing better or that everybody else can. I also put a quick survey up that I sent out in email and I'll link it below to just get an idea of how many people are actually unit testing and you can go fill it. As soon as you fill it out, it'll show you the results and give you an idea of like you know, what percent of people are actually unit testing, at least what percent of people that watch this video and read my emails are actually unit testing. All right, well, I'll cut it here, but um, thanks for watching. And again, drop a comment if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. And um, that's it. Thanks.